Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Hainer. I am a research analyst at the Center for Energy and Environment, and I'm here today to talk to you about a research project that we conducted on cold climate air source heat pumps that was funded by the Minnesota Department of Commerce. A little bit about what we do at the Center for Energy and Environment. We are a nonprofit that does all things energy efficiency. So we have a few programs such as the Home Energy Squad as well as the One Stop Commercial Lighting Program. We also do some planning and consulting work. Uh, we have a financing department as well as some folks that do some policy work. And the department that I'm a part of is the research group. And we do all sorts of research projects on various technologies. And I'm here today to talk to you about one of those on cold climate air source heat pumps. First of all, what is a heat pump? So it's a space conditioning device that does both heating and cooling. You can think of it very similar to a residential air conditioning system in that in the, the summertime when the space needs cooling, the heat pump is transferring heat from the interior to the outside using a refrigerant system and an air handler. What differentiates a, an air conditioner and a heat pump is that the system can also be run in reverse to provide heating in the winter time. So that top right diagram shows what's happening there. It's transferring heat from the outside to the interior using that refrigerant system and the air handler. And technologies have really been advancing in the last few years to allow these systems to do that down to very low outsider temperatures, some as low as negative 13 degrees. One thing to note in this study, since we are a cold climate, we mainly focused on the heating aspect of these heat pump systems. So we wanted to put these um, heat pump systems in real homes that have real heating and cooling loads and see how they actually perform. So they have been studied in more moderate climates, but not one as cold as Minnesota. So this diagram shows the spread of the, the different sites that we monitored. So there are five sites in the southeast portion of the state near the Twin Cities metro area. There's one on the western side of the state and then two in the northeast. And there were six total ducted systems and two ductless. We'll go through those definitions shortly. And we were able to monitor and install a very detailed instrumentation package to really get some great data on how these systems are actually performing. This is showing our instrumentation and that the picture shows a heat pump working in heating mode. So as you can see, it's transferring heat from the outside to the interior using that outdoor unit and the refrigerant um, going through the air handler and supplying heat to the home. The different points there are uh, some of the parameters that we were able to measure and we really focused on the, the energy consumed by the system as well as the energy delivered to the home, um, both in terms of the change in temperature between the return and the supply air temperatures, as well as the airflow of the system. So we were able to get some great data to really characterize these systems. Here we have a few pictures of one of our ducted flux fuel systems. So the picture on the left shows the outdoor unit. It looks very similar to uh, a split air conditioning system, the, the condensing unit for that. And the picture on the right shows the, the inside unit, which looks just like a condensing furnace. And that's basically because it is. The backup system for this heat pump is a condensing propane furnace. So it looks basically identical to that. Then you have the line set for the refrigerant coming in there on the top right of that, that picture that um, provides a path for the refrigerant to flow through the indoor unit and heat and cool the home using the heat pump. This is a similar system, except um, that it's an all electric system. So I mentioned on the previous slide, that's a flex fuel. The backup for that is a propane furnace. The backup for this is more of a supplemental heat source and is an electric booster heater that's in the plenum that boosts the capacity of the system at lower outside air temperatures when the heat pump is not able to meet the entire load of the home. And the picture on the right shows the outdoor unit. This is one of our ductless systems. So um, the picture on the left there shows the outdoor unit. 
Then we going to the right, we have the indoor unit, which is typically called the head. And this contains the line set for the refrigerant to flow through, as well as the supply fan for the system. And these systems, um, it's in the name, is that they're ductless, so there's no ductwork providing a path for the air to flow throughout the entire home. They're designed to meet only a portion of the load, and they're really heating and cooling their immediate surroundings. So the, the picture on the bottom right there shows the, the thermostat for this system. This floor plan shows the location of the ductless system that we installed in one of the sites in northeastern Minnesota. So you can see the red bars here show where the existing heating elements were. So this house heated their home uh, solely with electric baseboard resistance heating. So we were able to provide them a great, more efficient option to, to heat their home as well as add air conditioning. So that green star shows the location that we had the indoor head and that was able to condition the majority of the first floor for this home. What's nice about these ductless systems is that you can also add more than one if you, if you need some extra heating or cooling. So for example, if the bedroom on the north end of this floor plan uh, was having some problems with being too hot or too cool, you could certainly add a second ductless system in that location to, to add some conditioning. This is the equipment that we installed. So the text in green shows all of the ducted systems that we installed. So you can see they range from three tons to, to four tons, which is a pretty typical size for a residential system. And uh, the backup systems varied. So there were a standard efficiency propane furnace, a condensing propane furnace, as well as the electric booster heater for the backups. And uh, the text in black there shows the ductless systems and those are roughly about half the size so as I mentioned previously those aren't designed to meet the entire load of the home so they're roughly half the size and those all had electric resistance heat as their backup. When looking at sizing for these systems um, this plot is showing the capacity on the y-axis in BTUs per hour versus the outside air temperature. So there are three different sized units on this plot, a two ton, a three ton, and a four ton. So um, as you can see, the capacities decrease as the outside air temperature does, and that's simply because it's more, di more difficult to extract heat from colder air. So um, those are plotted against the house heating load curve in black, which can be estimated based on um, the manual J calculation or looking at the utility bills for the home. And where these lines intersect is called the switchover point. So that switchover point is the out outside air temperature at which anything below that, the heat pump is no longer able to meet uh, the entire load of the home and the backup system needs to kick in. So this particular system, we chose a three ton unit. And um, for the three ton unit for this home, it was able to meet 77% of the overall heating load for the home. So one rule of thumb when sizing these heat pump systems for heating over cooling is that you need to size up roughly one ton. So, you know, since we live in a heating driven climate such as Minnesota, um, you have to size up to meet that additional heating load. Um, that being said, these are all inverter driven systems, meaning that um, the compressor varies its capacity based on what the house needs. So if the load is small, then it ramps down and then does the opposite if, the, if it's colder outside and needs an additional load. The switchover point for all of our ducted systems was at 10 degrees. The ductless systems in the project, it's listed as 13 below here, but technically those didn't have a switchover point because the, the backup controls are not integrated with these. So these are able to meet a certain fraction of the load down to low outside air temperatures. The ducted systems all have automated controls and are integrated with the backup systems. And the ductless, the way those work is, it's kind of a manual action by the homeowner. So. The ductless systems have their own thermostat and um, they typically set it to whatever desired set point they want, say 70 degrees, then the, they can set the backup electric resistance heat to around 67 or 68. That way the heat pump will meet as much of the load that it possibly can. And then if the ambient temperature of the, the inside of the house dips too low, then the backup systems will kick in. 
This plot is looking at some of the cycle-based analysis that we conducted on this one of our ducted sites. So this is looking at the heating event COP. So each point on this plot is a single heating event for, for the heat pump system. So it's the COP, the coefficient of performance, which is a measure of the efficiency of the system versus the outside air temperature. And there are three different colors here. The events in purple are the backup propane furnace only. So you can see those remain pretty steady in terms of the efficiency all the way up to about 10 degrees. Then the points in orange are the heat pump only, and those range from COPs of about 1.5 up to um, 3.5 and above. Then the events in blue are heating events that contained a defrost cycle. So what happens with these heat pumps is that in, when they're in heating mode, the outdoor unit can tend to frost up in certain outdoor air conditions. So when that happens, uh, the system needs to go into a defrost cycle, which kicks on the backup propane furnace, heats up the refrigerant, and then reverses the flow of the refrigerant so that it sends that warm refrigerant out to the outdoor unit and melts the frost on, on that coil. So um, you can see these range quite a bit in COPs, and that's basically because some of these events are um, have a longer runtime with a fraction of a short fraction being for defrost, which would be the higher COPs, and the opposite is the case with the lower. So um, that's just something to note on these systems is that the, the defrost cycles can really affect the performance. This plot is showing some of the cold temperature performance of one of our ducted heat pump systems. So this is a box plot um, looking at the delivery capacity on the y-axis versus the outside air temperature on the x in five degree bins. So the key takeaway here is that the, the heat pump is really able to um, kind of maintain that capacity at low outside air temperatures. So you can see around 30 to 35 degrees or so, its um, capacity is roughly 20,000 BTUs per hour. And as it decreases in temperature, the system is able to ramp up and um, still put out roughly 18 to 19,000 BTUs per hour. This is the, the same plot with one of our ductless systems. So again, looking at the capacity on the y-axis versus the outside air temperature. And it's a similar thing is happening, but as you can see, it's able to heat down to very low outside air temperatures. So that last bin there is at negative 20 degrees. So it's, again, providing a fraction of the overall heating load down to low and lower and lower outside air temperatures, which is really great to see. So this home actually had two heat, ductless heat pumps installed one on the upper level, one on the lower, and they were able to remove some of their electric resistance baseboard because the heat pump was able to meet so much of the load, which is great to see. Now we have the energy use versus um, the outside air temperature. So this is energy consumed by the system on the y-axis versus the outside air temperature on the x. We have three lines here. The purple dash line is if you were just heating the home with the furnace. Then the, that purple line is the actual furnace only consumption, and the orange is the heat pump only. So as you can see, as the temperature drops, the propane consumption increases drastically and the heat pump kind of drops off. And the opposite happens as you increase an in outside air temperature. So one thing to note is that the, the orange points here are, are the heat pump only and it's energy consumed. So if you had a COP of, let's just say two, you're actually delivering twice as much energy to the home than the heat pump is consuming. This plot is looking at the system performance of a few different heating systems. The three lines at the bottom are um, a standard efficiency propane furnace, a condensing propane furnace, and electric resistance heat. And those are coming in at a COP of one or lower uh, at all kind of all outside air temperatures. Then the two curve lines there are two of our heat pump systems. So the blue line is a ducted flux fuel system, and that came in at an annual COP of about 1.2 to 1.3. Then the ductless system is the green, and that came in at 1.9 to 2.1 for COP. So really great performance. Overall, the install cost for the four ducted systems in our project was about $14,000. This is a little 
higher than we would typically expect for a system like this, and that was mainly due to the fact that we had some additional monitoring equipment installed, and the contractors that we work with weren't terribly familiar with the cold climate-specific heat pumps. They, they had experience with other heat pumps, but not the cold climate ones, so that um, kind of built in some additional costs in looking at the additional controls to set these up. So NREL maintains a database that um, has different pricing for these heat pump systems, as you can see here. Overall, the main takeaway for us is that if the furnace or air conditioner already needs a replacement, then you're looking at the incremental cost from that to the heat pump, that would result in a payback of around six years or so. For the ductless systems, it's more difficult to calculate since the costs vary quite a bit and the systems are often not a direct replacement from one to the other. So this is looking at some annual characteristics and savings for all of our systems in the study. The ducted flex fuel system compared to a condensing furnace. Um, the annual COP improved to 1.3 over 0.85, an overall 40% site energy reduction, a 30% cost reduction, a 60% reduction in propane use, as well as a 5% reduction in the overall emissions. So the ductless systems compared to electric resistance had annual COPs improved to 2.1 over 1 for electric resistance an overall 55% reduction in site energy and cost. The all-electric ducted heat pumps had an annual COP of around 1.9 and an overall 60% site energy reduction. Overall conclusions, the, the field monitoring definitely confirmed what we expected in terms of the performance of all these heat pump systems, which is great. The freeze protection and the integration with the backup heating systems are very important. Those can affect the COPs greatly. The flex fuel uh, heat pump systems can heat below 5 degrees and the all electric systems below negative 13 degrees. So, you know, these, the technology has increased so much that it's allowing these systems to heat uh, to lower and lower outside air temperatures, which is great, um, especially in Minnesota. And overall, the paybacks are most attractive when the existing heating or cooling systems need to be replaced. So just a quick chart there at the bottom of the overall annual COPs, the ducted flex fuel at 1.3, the ducted electric at 1.8, the ductless at 2.1 um, versus those baseline systems at the bottom. This is our website. So we, we published a, a lengthy report that um, I urge all of you to, to take a glance at that has much more detail than I covered in the presentation. And thank you.